is how we ride. This is how we do. What is about the proper amount to compete at the level you just did against Brad Sweet and the best in the world? What, what does it cost? You was talking earlier about the, the amount of money it takes to get cars over there. Do y'all have a local engine builder? What 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 numbers are we thinking in the Australian dollar sense? Yeah, okay. So at the the level we're competing at right now at Motorplex with with what we've got, I'd say an engine that I get built from KRE Kenny Mack that you might know of. Is he American? Um, that no, he's Australian. Okay, he so y'all do have some. Y'all do have engine builders then. So Shane Van Gisbergen, who ran supercars, and Broker Stecky that ran supercars. Um, they run KRE supercar engines. This okay. guy's top notch. Um, so those engines now cost us in sprint cars probably about one hundred and um, hundred sixteen thousand in the Australian dollars. That's just your, your car um, engine. And then I think uh, the cars themselves probably about sixty grand by the time you get it as a roller. Sixty. Um, uh, six about sixty grand as a roller, top notch roller. Is that yeah, being? Is that being? Is is that because of tariffs and stuff? Uh, a little bit, yes, it is. Um, getting parts in Australia is a lot harder than getting parts in America. So, um, and you know, we we then have to get them stickered over here as well, and some of that stuff over here costs a fair bit. Um, uh, yeah, it'd be by the time it hits the track, if you're lucky, your, your car's probably about one hundred and fifty grand's worth. Um, and uh, then, then again, you're going to need spare engines, parts as well. So, Seats. most teams in the pits, I reckon, are rolling around at about a million dollars a team to about five hundred thousand dollars a team with um, transporters and spares and the whole lot these days. Trucks, um, yeah, about million dollar teams, I reckon. And well, you said one hundred and sixteen for the motor. Um, I, I believe right now we're, the American dollars a dollar forty to y'all's dollar. Um, so about about fifty cents more per dollar that our our dollars valued. So that's you know top notch four tens over here about seventy five. So that's pretty close, yeah. honestly, in the conversion department. But the car that you said sixty. I mean, I I helped sell the when Kyle Larson Racing closed down at, with the two car. I helped sell those cars and and help organize it and all that stuff. We had the best of the best rolling out there, rolling for twenty two, twenty four thousand. All it's missing is the the motor. Throw the motor in and go. Uh, that's pretty high. Do y'all not have any car builders, or is it more so, or or chassis builders, or is it more so like front ends and rear ends and stuff that is lacking personal production? Because it sounds like the reason some of this stuff is is costing so much is because it's not produced by your own country. And that's it. Everything we're getting is is coming from other countries so we're, we're probably paying a freight we're pa paying a lot in freight probably extra 20 percent just in freight and then these companies over here need to buy a heap of stock um then to sell that stock as well and they're not going to just buy a heap of stock and not make profit on it so they're going to put their their bid on top as well and then you guys are building it and you just got to make your profit as well so we're getting parts through the hands of three or two companies before we get it and that's probably the hardest thing about being in Australia. Our rear ends these days are costing us four to five grand brand new over here. Um, the, you know, your Smith brakes and all that, the best of the best brakes. Everyone, everyone wants to run what the World of Outlaws people run as well. So we're, we're following World of Outlaw trends and yeah, them, them guys ain't cheap. Um, so we're, we're trying to get the same parts as them. So when they do come over here, we can compete against them as well. So. Well, that's that, probably what makes it very expensive, right? Well, and like you, like I was saying, I helped sell that Kyle Larson racing team, and they did have the cool chassis. I believe that was an Australian builder, right? Uh, I, I'm not too I sure. Think I think they closed by but, now, but it was it was cool chassis. Yeah. Yep. I'm I'm pretty sure they might have been. Yeah. Yep. I remember. But no um, more anymore. I actually ran that. I ran that chassis. The year Kyle Larson left, that Zach Chassis from Cool, um, he was his crew chief over there was Glenn Gleason, uh, Moth, and he ran in Sydney at Parramatta, and um, I ended up going over there and running that exact same Cool chassis after that. And, and so I, I think they do not do them anymore. Is there any in in country chassis builders? No, there no, there isn't anymore. So we're we're pretty much getting everything from 
from America now or, or wherever those those people build them. So um, I wouldn't say there's any chassis builders in in Australia, and um, if there is, well, yeah, I've just I haven't known or asked or heard of them. So. Or, um, or, or like yes. you said, everybody's trying to be like the outlaws. Why experiment with some guy's chassis? I want the Maxim or the J and J or the or the Eagle. Yeah, we just follow trends. Like Donny Shots when he was running J and J, he probably he still does, does he? But um, mm. everyone was running J and J. It was a trend. Everyone was going good at the Moplex with J and J trash uh, chassis. So then three quarters of the field were running J and Js by the next year, and now um, you know the Perth Moplex are now running nearly three quarters of triple x chassis is just a trend and who's going good in america is you know what we look at and then we buy and if it goes good in wa then it's just a it's like a fashion when we go buy buy all of that and then we keep trying that um we just follow the american fashion really and um you know it works for us and it gets us on an even playing field that is kind of interesting you mentioned parameda Obviously, y'all's side of the country had Perth. It seems like down there in Melbourne, they had the, you know, uh, Premier Speedway and Avalon and all their little... It seems like that's the more flourished area of sprint car racing. And then, I guess, on the eastern side, you would have had Parramatta and some others. How do you feel about what's happening all the way on the other side of the country? Yeah, I feel like, oh, with track-wise, you're saying, obviously... Um, we've, they've got Eastern Creek now in Sydney. They had to tear down Parramatta, which was an amazing track. It had no fault due to um, the the um, Barry Waldron, who who actually had that track. Um, the government then had to step in and take that track over. Would um, that have been the Perth of the East? I, it, it it was it was Parramatta was the prime of everywhere, and it tore tore a lot of Australia people um, to bits when they had to get rid of that place because there was so much history there. Um, and we had to get rid of that track, and, and they moved us out to another venue called Eastern Creek Speedway. Um, Which Toby from Sprint a, Car Hub says that's just a freaking, what is going on there? Were they just, did they just do that to move tax dollars and not tell anybody? They do it in America all the time. They're, I'm not I'm not too sure about the background stuff, but they moved them out there, and then they rushed the, the project um, to a point where, um, I'm unsure if, if it was the way that everyone was expecting it to be. And then they pretty much said, here's the keys to your venue, um, I think. And you guys now got to run it and you've got to make sure you, you you can lease it and pay those the, the, the bills, I guess. Um, and uh, that's probably where it's at at the moment. And I don't think anyone's actually touched it because um, a lot of people still think it's unfinished or it's, it's not what um, they expected it to be. Now, how how long of a drive would that have been? Did you ever race? Uh, you said you went to Parramatta. Was that a fly and race someone else's car situation? Because that's a big distance between the two. That's 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 probably more. Because I've drove from Daytona Beach, Florida, to Stockton, California. That was a forty-one hour drive. I've also drove from Maine to Watsonville. I think that was forty-seven. But from where you're at to the middle of the country, at Melbourne is thirty-five ish. To go all the way over there, how, how, how would that even work or did it work? Or, or, or did you fly over and drive someone else's stuff? No, so I went over and drove um, uh, for the track the track owner, Barry Waldron. He had a car there with um, Eastern, um, East Coast Pipelines. Um, so I don't know if you've heard of Robbie Farr. It was like yes. a two-car team. I was like a development driver for him a while back. And um, he gave me a call and said, uh, do you want to come over here and race at uh, Parramatta in a car? as like a development um and i went over there and um i was flying backwards and forwards me and my dad were flying backwards and forwards and we we're racing over there and um we we learned a fair bit that season i think i was only about 23 at that time um and that was you know running from big tracks you know from 17 to 23 then going on to these little tight ball rings with a big cushion that's what sort of helped me run um against the wall a bit easier when i went back to the plex as well so um, it was a long flight. So I think it would take us 38 hours or longer to drive from Perth all the way to Sydney. So it was a four-hour flight um, most nights, get in late on a Friday, wake up in the morning, uh, race that afternoon, um, finish that night, get some sleep, drink some beers with some mates, and then uh, get up Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning to fly home that night. And then 
drive when I get into Perth, drive five hours um, that night, then to make it back to Gelson. All this just to drive a car in a circle? Just to drive in a circle. That's uh, that's because Perth Motoplex, like you said, we're in the middle of nowhere. Um, we're blessed to have the two venues we got, but we're definitely not blessed with uh, the amount of tracks around us. This is how we ride. This is how we do.